Greetings, high flyers. I'm Funky Monkey. Welcome to my house of love. Subsequently, welcome to another edition of Isn't It Time? Now, I'm far too young to have ever experienced the joys of a Saturday morning cinema serial, but I understand its cultural significance and how it affects today's subject, Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow. Released in 2004, Sky Captain is a pulp sci-fi adventure in the classic style. An intrepid reporter and her aviator friend investigate a spate of attacks by mysterious giant robots. Failing to make back its reported budget, should it rule the skies or crash and burn? Well, let's find out. So grab your flying jacket, remove all the wheel blocks and start up your engines for Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow! It's 1939 in New York City, and journalist Polly Perkins is following a lead on a spate of disappearances. And no, I'm not going to do any woman in danger jokes. Let's just move on. There you see. It's only a movie. Well, she even tells her editor as much. And so Polly meets with her contact. Dr. Walter Jennings, I'm a research chemist. He's coming for me. It's never a nice feeling to have to stare down the Reaper. Why, I remember this one time over Nepal. Outside the cinema, a fleet of giant robots invade. There's only one man who can deal with these malevolent machines. You wouldn't see a Gundam running off like that, and they're manned. Back at base, Cap and his assistant Dex look over the wreck. But when our hero retires to his office, he receives a less than welcome visitor. This is the romantic subplot. Mr. Blue Text? They were a thing, he had a fling. She cut his fuel lines, three months of bad times. And so they bicker about it for the length of the movie, but I'll spare you that. Let's move on instead. Polly and Cap pay a visit to Dr. Jennings' lab. But it's already too late for Dr. Jennings. You must stop him. And worse, the base is attacked before Sky Captain could do anything about it. But Cap manages to scramble just in time as the attackers head for the city. At the base, Dex traces the comm signal. But at precisely the wrong moment, the robots return. And when Cap and Polly return, the base is in ruins. But it takes more than that to subdue our heroes. Ah, the humble scrap of paper. Many's the time it's gotten me out of a tight situation. And so, Cap and Polly fly to Nepal, where they meet an old friend. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Omi Gillily, Britain's favourite Iranian. Now there's a phrase you won't hear too often. Kaji takes them to the mountains near Shangri-La, but what they find is troubling. Something bad happened here. Our heroes investigate, but Polly wanders off and into danger. Polly ponies up to very important vials.
truly the arrogance of journalists knows no bounds. But then she and Kappa left in a room of lit dynamite. Thank heaven for Kaki then, who frees them in the nick of time. After a small detour to Shangri-La itself, which we're skipping as it's pretty much 90% exposition, Cap and Polly deduce the location of the mysterious Dr. Totenkopf, mastermind of the giant robot invasion. A base in the middle of nowhere. The perfect hiding place. Or is it? But first, they'll have to refuel. Enter Frankie Cook of the Royal Navy. And here, ladies and gentlemen, we have a perfect example of an early period helicarrier. Where do you think she'll got the idea from? Her amphibious squadron created diversion, allowing Cap and Polly to sneak in. Our heroes infiltrate Totenkopf's secret base, a place of weird and wonderful, and incredibly dangerous, creatures. Looks like Saturday night down the local. They also find what can only be described as a space arc, and worse, it's ten minutes from lifting off. After a timely rescue by Dex and the captured scientists, Cap resolves to confront Totenkopf, which leads to a startling realisation. But there's still a rocket to stop, and a world to save. Which would be simple, except for Totenkopf's mysterious protector. But Polly won't be denied her scoop, even now. Our heroes duck into the rocket with seconds to spare, and stop the ignition by the skin of their teeth. And so our movie ends with Polly Perkins taking a very important photograph. But oh dear. Lens cut. Ah, oh, too bad. But the memories will stay with you forever. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. Is it time you gave Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow another chance? It's certainly not a bad film. It's got plenty of action, twists, turns, and the romantic subplot adds an element of humour that is very welcome. Where it falls down, I feel, is in delivering a lot of the plot in exposition and the lack of screen time for the central antagonist. A sense of mystery is all very well and good, but I always like to see the villain. Having said that, this is still an underrated movie. It's smart, funny, and Law and Paltrow shine in their roles. As an homage to classic pulp fiction, it may not be more than the sum of its parts, but if you're looking for thrills, suspense, and a jolly good time, then yes, it is time you gave Sky Captain and the World of Tomorrow another chance. So thanks for watching, and join me next week for more fun and frolics. So long, folks!